Grade 8 Math, number 9.1a. This chapter is all about transformational geometry, chapter 9. And these are the properties of translations. So we're going to explore translations in this video. We learned that a function is a rule that assigns exactly one output for each input in chapter 6. A transformation is a function that describes a change in position, size, or shape of a figure. Think transformers like the toys, right? They change size and shape. The input of a transformation is called the pre-image and the output is called the image. So input is the pre-image, that's the original image. The output is the image, it's a new image, okay? So it goes from the pre-image to the image, all right? A translation is a type of transformation that slides a figure along a straight line, okay? So, here's our first graph, and you can see we've got a triangle here and a triangle here, and I have this point A connected to this point. This is called A prime. I'll explain that in a second. But, for point A, if we move it right to the eight, you know, eight spaces, and if we move down eight spaces, will be at A prime. So, let me take my little magnet off of here. If we go across to the right eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we go down eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, will be at this point, this A, which is called A prime. And if we do that with B and with C, if we move right eight and down eight, it'll put us exactly at this pink triangle, okay? So it slid along that line. The triangle is not affected and its orientation stays the same, see? We didn't flip it around, we didn't put it upside down, we didn't turn it counterclockwise or clockwise. Its orientation stayed the same, okay? Now in math, orientation means the position or direction of something, like clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? so. It did not change at all, it just slid like it was on ice, okay? And if I take my little magnet guy here, we can see that it fits there perfectly, and this is point A at the top, and it just slides down right into place, see? We can go the opposite direction and have it slide back, and it can slide back down. That is a translation, it's a slide. It's sliding, okay, like the triangle sliding on ice, all right? So, we label these vertices. Remember, a vertice is like the point right here, or right here, or right here, or even over here. They're the pointed tips, see? So, we label the vertices with prime notation, okay? So, if you look on here, you see these little marks? So, that's not a one, all right? That's a little tick mark, okay? If I were to look at it under a microscope, it would look more like that, okay? Like an upside-down teardrop, okay? So that's a tick mark, and it says the image of A is A prime. So the image of A is A prime, that's the A with the little tick mark. And B is B prime, and C is C prime, with that little tick mark, see? So, this is extra information. It's above your level, but hey, wouldn't you like to know stuff that everyone else doesn't? So, sometimes we'll use this prime notation with this little tick mark to identify the points of a new image. This little tick mark is used to let us know that it's not the original point. That's how we know that it's not a pre-image, that it's an image, because it's got that little tick mark. It's a derivative, okay? And to derive means to get, or obtain, or abstract, extract something. A derivative means it's unoriginal, it's not original, it's imitative, it's like imitation. It's something that's based on another source, okay? And they use that in calculus, it's a derivative of a function, okay? So you'll hear that as you get older, and I just wanted you to put that in your brain and tuck it away for next year or the year after. When you do pre-calculus or calculus, you'll say, oh, I think I've heard of that word before, okay? 
That's why I'm telling you now. So you don't need to memorize that, all right? I just want to introduce it to you. So A is, uh, the image of A is A prime, okay? So it slid down and we actually say that the image of point A is A prime. The image of point B is B prime. The image of C is C prime. See? That's how you read it, okay? So let's look at another one, all right? Let's look at this one. Here we have a trapezoid. And you can see, if I take this away, that we slid point A down to here, okay? And then we slid all the other points with it, okay? So it was here, and this is point A right here, this little tip, okay? I don't know if I can mark that, but that little tip right there just slides on down, and it goes there, and it's identical, isn't it? So what we did was, and I don't know if we can count this because it's very tiny, is we went right six spaces and down eight. So we went right six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we went down eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that put us at A prime. And we did the same thing with B and C and D to get us B prime, C prime, and D prime. We went right six and down eight. And the trapezoid is not affected. It's the same orientation. It's the same. It just slid. See that? Now, if we drew all the lines connecting the vertices... What do you think we'd have if we drew this like this? I know it's not exact, but look what happens when we connect all the vertices. Kind of makes a 3D shape, doesn't it? See that? It's kind of neat. So that's a translation. The trapezoid wasn't affected. Its orientation is the same. So think of translation like, you've heard translations in words. When we have a translation of words from a different language, they're the same words, same meaning. They just slide to another language. Like Spanish, buenos dias becomes good day. Good day. It just slid into that other language, see? Even though I know not all language translations are exact, but I wanted to give you an example of the word translation, okay? It slides it to the other language, and the meaning is the same, see? So we can actually make a 3D figure that way, couldn't we, by connecting those vertices? So that's exploring translations, okay? Give you a little pre-calculus tutorial there, and we're going to continue on talking about translations. And the next video, 9.1a, we're going to talk about the properties of translations. All right? I'll see you there. I hope this was helpful. Keep your chin up. We're going to make it through this. Bye.